When a team is facing a rough patch, it usually is coupled with complaints. For the Denver Nuggets, it seems like that rough patch started back in November. The day before Jokic was ejected in Detroit, he accumulated five fouls early in the second half of a significant defeat. He can be seen repeatedly expressing frustration with calls and non-calls, reaching his peak when he committed a questionable flagrant foul, right after disputing a questionable offensive foul call. Recently, to start the second half in Houston, Jokic engaged in a conversation with an official near the scorer's table. During that exchange, he used Nuggets coach Michael Malone as an example, placing his hands on Malone's back to expressively emphasize a point. Now, this kind of behavior is not unusual, especially for superstars, ask Luka Doncic or LeBron James. Game is over. Lakers furious. They thought he was fouled. LeBron James so upset. I would be giving the refs too much credit to overlook the way Nikola Jokic has been guarded. Defenders are especially physical, particularly in the post. And around the league, tough defenders are countering the NBA's best interior scorers by employing the same strategy used against Jokic. Place two hands to the back, play rough, and challenge the referees to make calls. However, it is worth mentioning that there really isn't any other effective ways to defend the Joker. In the first four games of a recent Nuggets road trip, Nikola Jokic only took 15 free throws averaging 6.23 attempts per 48 minutes played. This is considerably lower than his season average of 8.6 attempts per 48, and falls way behind other high usage MVP candidates, like Joel Embiid at 16.2, Giannis Antetokounmpo at 14.8, Kevin Durant at 11.1, and Luka Doncic at 10.2 attempts per 48 minutes. Despite being at the top of the league in touches per game and post-ups per game, Jokic's foul's drawn rate doesn't align with his other impressive statistics. The obvious explanation is Jokic's playing style, heavily focused on ball movement and team-oriented offense. His knack for seeing the floor, guiding cutters, making incredible passes, and drawing double teams makes him an exciting player. He doesn't rely on drawing fouls to generate offense, setting him apart. However, this season, Jokic has displayed a more aggressive scoring approach. His seconds per touch and dribbles per touch have increased compared to last year. In the first 15 games, he averaged 18.7 field goal attempts, up from the same period last year. The more dominant he becomes as a scorer, the more teams might resort to guarding him aggressively. Although he finds himself in foul drawing situations more frequently, the referee's calls aren't coming through at the same rate as other star players. Perhaps this shift could lead to Jokic becoming a threat to lead the league in assists. In the first four games of the recent road trip, he matched a career high with 18 assists, averaging 17.45 per 48 minutes, a major increase compared to his season average of 12.49 per 48 minutes. But several incidents this season, such as a lane violation in Detroit, a scuffle with Marvin Bagley, and an opponent jumping on Jokic's back in Orlando, were all off-ball situations, but blaming the referees alone doesn't capture the whole picture. If teams notice Jokic reacting strongly to no calls, they may intensify their physical approach against him. Teams have struggled to find an effective defensive strategy against Jokic for years, and getting him frustrated or even ejected seems to be the only proven method of completely containing him. But the rough play gets tricky when considering how other elite players seem to be officiated. Nikola Jokic doesn't seem to get the superstar treatment. Take, for example, Game 4 of last year's NBA Finals. Moving into the fourth quarter, Jokic already had three fouls. With 9 minutes and 41 seconds remaining, the Joker picks up his fourth foul. Then, one possession later, after a flop job by Bam Adebayo, Jokic is called for his fifth foul forcing Coach Malone to take his best player out of the biggest game, even in crunch time. While the Nuggets were able to pull off this win anyways, it's hard to imagine LeBron James getting tagged with this kind of foul, even in a regular season game. I don't know about that. That's a lot of embellishing. Recently, in their first home loss of the season, Jokic and the Nuggets faced more controversy with the refs. After two Jokic free throws, followed by a defensive stop, the Nuggets cut the once 25-point deficit to just 8 points. 
and the momentum was swinging their way after an 18-point run. Jokic got the ball again, likely attempting to get back to the free throw line. And then Alper and Shengun's defensive strategy goes as follows. He wraps his right arm around Jokic's body, touches the ball with his left hand, and swipes down with both hands, completely grabbing Jokic's left arm in what seems like an obvious foul. The refs, however, saw it differently, making the call for an unchallengeable jump ball. Of course, Jokic isn't known for his jumping ability, and after losing the tip, that call killed the momentum, further frustrating the Nuggets, even leading to the eventual ejection of Jamal Murray. Uh, Murray wouldn't let it go. And JT are just waiting and, well. For it, the last three years, Nikola Jokic has averaged about six free throw attempts per game. Of course, he doesn't go to the same pump fake, foul bait strategies as a Joel Embiid, but the discrepancy in free throw attempts, Embiid shooting almost double the attempts, seems to reflect something about the way referees officiate Jokic, or maybe how they officiate Embiid. But this type of refing didn't stop the two-time MVP in the past, and a couple poor games is nothing to overreact to. Do you think Jokic is ref fairly? Should the Nuggets' recent losses be cause for concern? Let us know in the comments, and please subscribe. Thanks for watching Basketball Pantheon.